So a big welcome to you as we gather on this, the fifth Sunday Pentecost. Yes, I know some of you are still at home in your bathrobes, sip in your coffee, and there are those of us in the church. Whoever we are, we are God's church, and we are God's people together. And so glad to have you with us, even if you are at home. Um, please know that a very uh, warm welcome is extended to each and every one of you. Uh, a little bit about the service today. It's a uh, we get the story of, uh, or I should say the scene, the scenario takes place, Jesus uh, crossing the sea with the disciples. He just finished teaching, and he has the disciples uh, uh, take the boat out to cross over the lake to the other side. And he falls asleep because he's tired. He'd been teaching all day. And he's sound asleep in the stern of the boat, and the waves come, and the storm comes, and the water's uh, crashing down, and the disciples, they are terrified. And they're afraid they're going to perish. And so they finally wake him up and say, Lord, don't you care about us? Don't you know what we're going through? And he stands, speaks to the waves and the storm and says, peace, be still. And the waves are calmed. And I'm guessing the sun comes out and the storm is no more. Before they were fearful. Now they're terrified. No longer the storm, but of this man, Jesus. They still haven't figured out who he is. That he truly is the Son of God. I hope for each of us that we uh, get to a place in our lives where we discover who Jesus truly is. That he is there for each and every one of us. No matter who we are, no matter what we've gone through. Whatever storm is going on in your life and mine, God is there to help bring peace. To say be still. So I hope that uh, the service, the message, the music today is helpful for you in your Christian journey. And with that said, let me begin the service now. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And so, let us pray. Lord, we thank you again as we gather as your people. And Lord, thank you that you are truly the Lord of life. You are the Lord who calms the storms. The Lord, we need not ever be afraid. Help us, O oh Lord, to to know your peace that brings stillness and calm no matter what we go through, no matter what fears or anxieties are raging within. Oh Lord, come. Come and speak that word of peace and calm and quiet to each of us. Lord, I pray not that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleased in your sight. In this I pray. Amen. Again, thank you for joining us. I now turn the service over to our for uh, music team as they share the gifts of music. God bless. Here in this place the new light is streaming Now is the darkness vanished away See in this space of fears and God dreaming Brought here to you in the light of the day Gather us in the lost and forsaken Sin, the blind and the lame Call to us now and we shall awaken We shall arise at the sound of a name We are the young, the lives are a mystery We are the old, we employ your faith The proud and the strong Give us a heart so meek and so lonely Give us a courage to end all the song Give us to drink the wine of compassion Give us to eat the bread that is you Nourish us well and teach us to fashion Lives that are my gospel lesson for this, the fifth Sunday of Pentecost, from the fourth chapter of the Gospel of Mark, beginning with verse 35. On that day, when evening had come, Jesus said to the disciples, 
Let us go across to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with them. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so the boat was already beginning to be swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up, and they said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind, and he said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm, and he said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe, and they said to one another, Who is this? Even the wind and the sea obey him. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. And so grace and peace to you from God our Father, from Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. So let us pray. Lord, we thank you again as you gathered your people. Yes, some in the respective homes and some in the church. But, oh Lord, wherever we are, we are your church, your people. So, Lord, come now. Come and fill the hearts and lives of all your people. I pray now that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts please in your sight. In this I pray. Amen. Victor Hugo was famous for his novel, Hunchback of Notre Dame. I'm sure most of you have heard of that one. What you probably hadn't heard is also he wrote another story called The 93. It tells of a ship caught in a dangerous storm on the high seas. At the height of the storm, the frightened sailors heard a terrible crashing noise below the deck. They knew once that the new noise came from a cannon, part of the ship's cargo that had broken loose. It was moving back and forth with the swaying of the ship, crashing into the side of the ship with terrible impact. Knowing that it could cause the ship to sink, two brave sailors volunteered to make the dangerous attempt to try and retire, retie that loose cannon. They knew the danger of a shipwreck from the cannon was greater than the fury of the storm. That is like human life. Storms of life may blow about us, but it's not these exterior storms that usually po pose the greatest danger. It's the terrible corruption that can exist within us which can overwhelm us. Fear storm outside may be overwhelming, but what is going on inside can pose the greater threat to our lives. Our only hope, is li our only hope lies in conquering that wild enemy. Unfortunately, the storms that rage within us cannot be cured by ourselves. It takes the power of God's love, as revealed in Jesus Christ. He is our only hope of stilling the tempest that can cause harm, that can harm our souls and can cripple our lives. That's what the disciples learned this day on the Sea of Galilee. You see, they thought the danger lie outside the boat. They would soon learn the real danger lie within the boat, in their own hearts. In a word, they lack faith. Without faith, their lives are at risk to the storms which in, would inevitably come. And come they did, and come they will. So what can we learn from this boat ride in the storm? First, we learn that, learn that storms can come suddenly. It had been a memorable afternoon. Far and wide, people had gathered to hear the Galilean tell about the kingdom of God. He told them that the kingdom was like a farmer who went out to sow seeds. He compared the kingdom to the smallest mustard seed, which becomes a giant plant. He told them many stories, but the day was now fast passing, and it was time to depart. Jesus told his disciples that they must go to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. Surely, the disciples must have questioned this decision. Why leave now? They were on the verge of success. Here was where all the people were. On the other side, that's where the Gerasenes lived. They were the pagans. But the disciples, they did as Jesus instructed. They set sail that beautiful afternoon on the Sea of Galilee. Sun was shining. And Jesus, weary from the day's activity, he fell asleep. As the late afternoon faded into dusk, trouble began to loom. The white puffy clouds that dotted the sky were replaced by low-hanging black, black clouds. The stilled waters began to churn with white caps, and then large waves began to slam into the side of that tiny boat. The sea of Galilee was notorious for these sudden and violent squalls. The disciples must have thought that in telling them to cross over Jesus was leading them to the destruction, not their salvation. Well, let me tell you something. Trouble can come just that fast in your life and mine. Everything can be going beautifully. People can be congratulating you, 
things can be going your way. And all of a sudden the telephone can ring and everything in your life can be turned upside down. Your medical tests can come back. All of a sudden you find yourself in the midst of a storm. And it doesn't take long for the storms to come, does it? Amazingly, as, he's violent, as this violent storm was taking place, Jesus was fast asleep. John Wesley, the great reformer, was coming to America, and he found himself in the middle of, his, of a storm as well. And he was frightened to death. He frantically ran around the ship that he was on seeking shelter. In the process, he came across a group of Moravians. They were singing and praying calmly. No fear, no panic, not even among the children. Wesley could not believe this, and he asked the source of their strength. And they replied, we have Jesus as our Savior. Well, this was one of several turning points in Wesley's life and the beginning of a friendship with these Moravians. Storms can come suddenly. Disciples experienced it, as did Wesley. We all do, do we not? And that's when we go to the stern of the boat, and we find Jesus fast asleep. He doesn't even know there's a storm raging. Can't even hear the howl of the wind. Doesn't even feel the waves crashing into the side of the boat. The water splashing all over his face doesn't stir, does disturb him a bit. Doesn't he care? Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Doesn't God care about what I am going through? Sudden furious storm outside may be overwhelming, but what's going on inside can pose a greater threat to our lives. Who will calm the tempest? Who will the waves obey? Quiet. Be still. Storms can come suddenly, and they can make you lose direction. And I think that's the second thing we learned from this boat ride in the midst of this storm, that we can lose our direction. This is probably an obvious fact, but it's one that needs, a, needs a mentioning. You see, many of the disciples, they were experienced fishermen. They had chartered these waters hundreds of times before. They had been caught in storms before, so why all the fear in this particular storm? But one obvious answer is that this was a storm unlike any others. Possibly, but I'm not so sure. I think the storm was like any other. They knew how to deal with it. What I think is this. I think they're chastising Jesus for not pulling his weight. The disciples find Jesus fast asleep and they say, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? In other words, are you just going to sleep there or are you going to get up and help? Get up and grab an oar, Jesus. We need all hands on deck. But it's, uh, it is at this moment that the unexpected happens. Jesus does get up, but he does not grab an oar. He calms the storm. This is why the disciples were terrified. Look at the story. The disciples are certainly frightened by the ferocity of the storm. And they need everyone to pitch in, but Jesus, he rebukes the storm. Quiet. Be still, he says. And the disciples are stunned. They were looking for human help. What they got was divine authority. They were looking for a hand. What they got was God. They were terrified, and they asked each other, Who is this, that even the wind and the waves obey him? So let me ask you, which would you fear, the storm or the one who masters the storm? I think it's here that they lose direction. And Jesus asks and says, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? And now listen to this. They don't know who it is that rides in the boat with them. Do you still have no faith, he asks. Do you still not understand who I am? Yes, they were frightened during the storm. But after the storm, they are now terrified. Why? Because of he who was in the boat. The real problem is not the storm outside, but it's the storm of doubt and unbelief inside. Unfortunately, storms that rage within us can't be cured by ourselves. It takes the power of God's love as revealed in Jesus Christ. He is our only hope of stilling the tempest of doubt that can harm our souls and cripple our lives. That's what the disciples learned this day in that Sea of Galilee. They thought the danger lay outside the boat. They would soon learn that the real danger lie within the boat, within their very own hearts. In a word, they lacked faith. So where do you turn 
in the midst of a storm? It's an urgent question, and it's a theological question. The answer will depend upon where you place your ultimate loyalty. It was not the only time that the disciples had to face this question. If you remember, it was in the sixth chapter of the Gospel of John. We read where the crowds began to fall away from Jesus. Oh yes, the people still followed him, but the old excitement was no longer there. Jesus was no longer talking about the kingdom of God. He was talking about taking up a cross. It was at this point that Jesus turned to the disciples and he asked, And so, do you also wish to go away? And it was good old Simon Peter who spoke for the group. Peter often spoke impetuously and often out of turn, and often without thinking. But good old Peter, he always spoke from the heart. Lord, he answered, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to know you as the Holy One. When we find ourselves sinking in the midst of a storm, where else are you going to go but to God? Came across a story about a woman in the community who was well known for her simple faith and great calm in the midst of many trials. Another woman who had never met her but had heard of her came to visit one day. I must find out the secret of her calm, happy life, she thought to herself. And as she met this woman, she said, So, you're the woman with great faith I've heard so much about? No, came the reply. I'm not the woman with a great faith. I am the woman with a little faith and a great God. Do not believe that in the boat that day on the Sea of Galilee that Jesus rebuked the disciples for their lack of faith in his ability to calm the storm. What I believe is that Jesus is disappointed that they do not yet understand who he is. If they understood that, then they would not fear the sea. When you find yourself in the midst of a storm and the boat is sinking, may I suggest that you too would turn to Christ? Where else are you going to go? Only Jesus has the words of eternal life. Only God is the Holy One. Only Jesus can calm the tempest. Only God delivers. And so that brings us to our final point. Yes, storms can come suddenly, and they can make you lose direction. If we do not understand who it is that is in the boat with us, then our fear of the storm, it has the power to paralyze. But Jesus awakened to rebuke not only the storm, but the disciples. Why are you afraid? He asked. Have you no faith? Now let us be clear about this. The promise that is made to us is that of God's presence. No more, no less. In the midst of the storm, God will be in the boat with you. No need to panic, though the situation may appear bleak. The Lord of the host and the Lord of church is in the boat with you. You need not forsake your witness. The Lord of history is in the boat with you. You need not become immobilized. The Lord of the storm is in the boat with you. And that is the promise. Will the clouds dissipate immediately? There's no guarantee. We no longer have to struggle with problems. That has never been promised. Will you henceforth prosper as the TV ministers uh, assure us? Probably not. Well, you say, it doesn't sound as though the promise that is given is all that great. Maybe not. But I got Noah through the storm. He got the Jews through the wilderness. He got Mary through her pregnancy. He got Jesus through the crucifixion. And it will be sufficient to get you through the night. So people of God, do not lose heart. The Lord, Lord of hosts truly is with you. And he will never leave you or forsake you. On that you can be assured. And I pray it be so. And all God's people said, Amen. Change my heart, O oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. Change my heart, O oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart. Be like
I believe that you are truly present in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Lord, I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, and let me never be separated from you. O Lord, may I live in you, and you in me, in this life, and in the life to come. And all God's people said, Amen. And so again, we want to thank you for joining us this day. We hope this service today has been helpful in your Christian journey. Please know our love and prayers are with each and every one of you. And again, if we can ever be of any help, uh, do, do not hesitate to call us or email us at the church office. And so receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. God bless you. Thank you.